How to turn your Suron and Segway into a monster with the BAC 4000. In the uh, kit, you get your ASI controller, the three face wires color coded right there on the left top mounting bracket along with the mounting screws to be mounted on the frame of the bike, the egg rider display, the thumb throttle, and the plug and play kit. The tools you're gonna need are an eight millimeter socket, wrench, it can be 11 millimeters or 7 16th, needle nose pliers, Phillips screwdriver, a metric hex set, I will post all these tools in the description below. Ratchet, either a heat gun or a uh, blowtorch type lighter to heat shrink the ring grade wires on the phase wires. A cheap multimeter to do some tests. Um, I'm gonna be cheating, I'm gonna be using my electric Miller ratchet and my Phillips drill to speed up the process. But first, we're gonna to need to run some tests to make sure that your uh, bike harness uh, wiring is, uh, can be matched with our harness. Sometimes people add lights to their bikes and brakes and they change the wiring of their bike, but we're gonna be able to uh, work our way through that and show you how to test for that and correct it. So this is what the harness looks like. Uh, this is the 16 pin connection. This is the ground that goes to the ground of your controller. This is the six pin connector. And then these are the ones that connect to the harness of your bike. There's a nine pin. Uh, this is an eight pin. And here is your regen, yellow. And the display is green. Okay, so here we have the controller on the bench simulated as if it was installed on the bike. So uh, the ground wire coming from the 16 pin, make sure it's uh, connected to the negative on top of the negative power wire from your uh, bike. So as you can see, it's got a ring terminal and it goes on top, not underneath, on top, and then underneath the top phase wire, which in your case, it will be color coded yellow. And then make sure that the red power wire from your bike is on the positive. It's very important. Um, so it's uh, blue, red, green, black, yellow, and then the uh, ground wire. As you can see, I have it coming from the 16 pin harness underneath the yellow. This is gonna be yellow. Your ears, ears are gonna be color coded and it goes on top of the ground wire. So this is what it looks like. So make sure you have that wired correctly, especially this power wire, this has to be on the positive. Um, always double check, triple check before you install the battery. Make sure it's uh, wired correctly. Uh, never hurts to triple check. Remove the battery. and throw your circuit breaker to the off position to the left. Unplug the battery and remove. With your needle nose pliers or any pliers, remove the circle clips holding the bolts of the cover.
Then I'll pull out the bolts. Boom. And pull out the cover. Remove these two bolts with the four millimeter hex. and pull out the wire. With the hex number five, remove the two side bolts. The hex number five, loosen the bolt. Remove the horn to the side. You can see a big opening here. We're gonna move that. We're gonna run some wires through there. With the hex number three, remove the two top bolts. Now we need to remove these two bolts. We're also going to remove these bolts and these bolts on both sides. And now we have access. Now we can pull this back. The wire that we're looking for is a six pin connector. Coming from the controller. This one right here. We're going to disconnect this wire to run some tests with our multimeter. This is the harness plug that we're looking for that we're going to run tests on. In order to run tests on this plug, we need to connect the battery. So we're going to put the battery here because we can't put it in there. We're going to strap it here. We're going to connect the battery and then we're going to probe this harness. We'll show you how and what we're looking for. So I've plugged in my battery and I've thrown the circuit breaker and I found the ground pin of the 48 volt, which is the top port right there. We have our multimeter to measure in up to 100 volts. We're going to stick the ground probe in here and the harness that I spoke of earlier, we stuck the positive lead of the probe into that port, which is from the left, top, one, two, three. From the right is one. I'll zoom in. The purpose of this test is to ensure that when I turn my key, that I get battery voltage out of that harness pin and therefore turning on your controller. 
Well, that checks out. We're getting battery voltage out of that pin. That would then activate your controller and your controller, your new controller would be, would be on. On, off. The second test we're gonna do is a continuity test. We're gonna put the multimeter into continuity. And if you did it correctly, you should hear a beep. The purpose of this test is so that your switch here, when your, for example, if your egg writer display goes out or is no longer working, you were into trails and it broke off or something, you'll still be able to go from eco to power, from eco to sport using this switch. Therefore, uh, avoiding yourself being stranded if your egg writer display goes uh, kaput. This is a plug that plugs into the battery. In order to enable that feature, we need to join these two wires. You're no longer gonna plug this into your battery after the upgrade. But if you wanna enable that feature, uh, in case you get stranded, you're gonna take this particular pin and that pin, and you're gonna join them together. That color wire is the black wire and the green wire. If you've cut, if you have the Saran and you did the cut the wire uh, speed mod, um, you're gonna wanna join that cut wire together with the Segway. Um, you don't need to do that. The uh, increasing speed is done through the app. Nevertheless, you still need to join these two wires in order to uh, allow your switch to work uh, in case your egg writer goes kaput. Now, this is not necessary, but I like to have that feature uh, in case my egg writer goes out. I like to be able to go from eco to sport mode. So we're going to join those two wires. As you can see, I've cut and joined the two wires already. Then I'm going to tape this up and tape all of this up since we're no longer going to be plugging this into the battery. And this is the end result. Now you shouldn't be too concerned about electrical issues with this because the wire that we cut and joined, there's only about 5 volts going through there at 200 milliamps. Uh, but it's a great feature to have and to enable with our kit. Our kit is a full featured kit which um, allows for a lot of really cool features to be activated. This bike doesn't even come with regen. We're gonna add regen to this battery, to this bike. For the continuity test, the battery does not have to be on or the power have to be on at all. Uh, the battery can actually be disconnected for this test. Okay, the probes that we're gonna be doing the continuity test is the second one from the left on the, bo on the bottom. Second one from the left on the bottom. And fourth, from the left on the top, you can see that. And then we're gonna throw the switch. It checks out. You're good to go. Okay, so all our tests are done. I've removed the battery again, and now it's time to remove the controller. Unclip the rest of the wires from the controller to the harness. Okay, we've removed the controller wires from the harness. Now it's time to remove the power and ground and three phase wires from the controller and it should, it should pop out. We're using a number five hex to remove it uh, be careful, make sure the hex is fully inserted. You don't want to strip the bolt. Give it a nudge first. Give it a nudge, now it's loose.
more. And there it is. So that our ASI controller sits really high up, we're gonna flip this around so that these, these holes are a little higher. The way you do that is you uh, remove these screws on both sides. We're going to unplug the tilt sensor as well and get rid of it. We're not gonna use it. Just unplug it right here. Make sure you're unplugging the tilt sensor and not anything else. So I'll show you what it looks like after I've done that. We're going to remove this from here. Okay, this is what it looks like. And we're just gonna put that back in like that. With the, with the hose closest to the top. Like that. Time to prepare the controller for install. We're going to put the bracket on. We're going to, if you have screws on the top, remove those three screws. And we're going to put this bracket on top. The holes should align. And then we're going to prepare our phase wipes. Um, just remember, blue bottom. The control is going to be installed this way. So blue bottom green in the middle and then yellow on the top like that and then most importantly do not make a mistake on this this is really important when you blow your controller that's the positive terminal red goes here just remember red goes here plus so when you're attaching the red wire you want to attach that to that terminal I'm going to show you what it looks like after I've done the attachments. When bolting on uh, wires to the controller, whether it's the power or the phase wires, power or the phase wires, don't forget to include the locking washer. So it's bolt, locking washer, washer. This ensures that your bolt doesn't come loose um, on the controller. This is what your controller should look like. I've angled this blue one down. That is blue, green, yellow. And then we're going to now remove these bolts. So we're not going to attach these wires to the motor phase wires. And we're also going to now remove these bolts because we're going to use them now to mount the controller onto the system. But first, let's also attach the top bracket. Oops, this is what the what it looks like with the top bracket mounted. These are the two mounting bolts for the sides. We're going to mount this uh, right now. And then we're going to attach the phase wires and the power wires. Okay, so I've covered the nuts with heat shrink. And we're gonna heat shrink one at a time. Uh, we encourage you to use a heat gun. Um, you don't want to be using a lighter around here personally. You might burn some wires. So um, also when you're using the heat shrink gun, make sure you're aiming at the wire and nothing else.
bring these down and shrink, shrink those as well. Okay, we heat shrink from the second sleeve for added protection. Now some people like to remove this and bring it down for more space. Um, that's up to you. I, I, I'm able to do it without taking this down. Um, and that's pretty much it for the phase wires and power wires. Now let's install the harness. Okay, we're gonna feed these in through the top. The regen cable and the Egg rider plug, so we're gonna put that through where the horn, you can see the horn uh, opening on the other side. And if you have triple clamps, this bike doesn't have a triple clamp, but the others do, you're gonna put that through the two clamps right here. Then you're gonna plug this connector to the nine pin connector. It takes a little bit of massaging. You hear a click. And the connector that we were testing earlier, I'm gonna connect that to the eight pin, connect that. And then I'm gonna bring these connectors down to the controller. You may be wondering what this wire is for this one right here that is for a future use we can actually create a switch to do all kinds of cool things like uh, reverse or cut off engine cut off braking you do have region already uh, with the other port but this is just an extra one that we're going to be using in the future nothing gets connected to this at the moment And then plug in your harness. All right, and now we're just gonna make some room at the top to organize all this stuff. And we're going to close this first, and then we're gonna close this. Okay, so I've taken all the connectors and I've shoved them in through here. There's a lot of space in here. So we're gonna make sure that all those big bulky connectors go in there so that we won't have such a difficult time trying to close the compartments. Make sure you don't pinch any wires. Particularly this wire, this is your power wire. So you 
don't want to pinch this one. <clears throat> Pushing more connectors through here through that crevice so that we'll have lots of room to close this. All right, now we can just close this like this, and we're good. Just need to install the bolts one on one right there and the other one on the other side. And after that, we'll start closing this up. All right, so I've moved this harness's wires to this edge, and that harness's wires to that edge to free, to free up this area because that's where the bracket is going to mount to. So that when I close it, I'm not pinching any of these wires. It's a really tight fit. You also have to move your horn sideways out of the way so that you can bring this over and, uh, and screw it in. You don't have to tighten this too hard. It has locking washers. That's not going to be getting loose. So don't tighten that too hard. And you just bring your horn over and tighten that bolt again. Here are your wires for your regen and your display. Nice and neat. We'll connect these up soon enough. And as you can see how flush this is, we're gonna put this back. Here. I'm gonna put the cap back on, we're going to tighten these bolts, um, and let's see what it looks like. As you can see, it's mounted very high up on the uh, bike, unlike other kits. You don't have huge gaps on the side, and you're not crisscrossing the wire loom wires with the face wires. Safest install on the market right now. So we removed the skirt from the old controller and have installed it. Now it looks very flush, giving it that factory look. And we're gonna organize these wires up through here. Now it's time to install the egg guard display um, and then the uh, region. We don't need this anymore, so we're actually going to take that off. It's two screws and then you slide this up to remove this stays. Then just lift it up. Slides right up. We're going to put our region here, and then we're going to put our display here. So we're going to loosen the brake and move it over. Okay, so we slid the brake over. Now we're going to loosen the screw that's on the bottom here. Slide this out. Slide in the display. Slide this back in, and then slide the region. All right, loosen the nut. It's a 2.5, another display, and slide it in. Slide the switch back in. and then align it to your liking. Now it's time to slide in your region. Another option is to put the brake in between the switch horn 
and anchor display. You can put some from right here. Either way, whatever is most comfortable for you. Then we put the wires from the controller of the regen and display through the organizer of the bike. And we're going to connect green. And you have to align these pins. They're very small pins. You got to make sure you're aligned with a little hole. There's like a little divot here that aligns with the divot of the uh, display. Make sure when you're putting those in, you're not bending the pins. Okay, we've organized the cables and make sure that we have plenty of play when you turn. Now we're going to follow this wire from this display because we don't need this this more. We have the egg writer. We're going to follow it back into here. We're going to move this again and then we're going to unplug and plug this since we don't need this. We don't need it anymore. Okay, so this is the old display. We're going to follow this cable through here and we're going to disconnect it. We don't need it anymore. We have our egg wire display. Now we can put this back in. When you're putting it back in, make sure you don't squish any wires. This is a slight opening here. So these wires go through the opening and then you're going to install your screws. It doesn't have to be too tight. Put back our lid. And then we're going to put back the uh, stir clips. It's in there. And you're all done in terms of attaching the region, display, uh, removing the screen, adjusting your brake, organizing your wires. Now let's drop in the battery and uh, we'll go to the next step. So we have two batteries here. We have a Segway X160 battery. And this is a Saron battery. This is 60 volts. This was the one that came with the bike. It's 48 volts. Good thing about our kit, um, when you buy uh, our kit, you can swap between a 48, 60 volt, 60 volt bypass, 72. I don't have a 72 volt on hand, um, but when I get one, I'll show you how to swap that in there too in less than two minutes. Uh, you can change voltages um, and the settings of the of our kit. You'll be able to do it with um, the CYC app, and you'll be able to do it with the GL uh, E dashboard app, which comes out in July, towards the end of the July. Um, you'll be able to do that fairly easily and quickly. Okay, so I've dropped the X160 battery in here. We're going to plug this in. Remember, we don't need this anymore, so we can tuck that somewhere back there, uh, probably back here, out of the way, not going to need it anymore, you know, connect the battery first, and then you're going to throw the contactor switch, circuit breaker, close the lid, and uh, Let's show it. Let's, let's turn it on. Okay, so we're going to turn on the uh, bike. I've added a quad lock here because I'm going to show you how the app works as well. Uh, but first, let's uh, test our install. If we turn the key, we should see this light up. Nothing's going to happen because you have to turn on your display. If you turn on your display, you'll 
see that splits around. And we're in sport mode. As you can see, it says uh, 50 volts, 49.9 volts. The battery is about 36%. You can see that. If you can see that, you can also see it here. This is the. It's not charged all the way, but this is the, uh, the 36%, just like it says here. Uh, <coughs> so let's uh, let's test. Okay, so it's working. It's really nice to have that big spark that comes stock with the uh, smaller bike. Pretty neat. Okay. Let's go uh, to change mode. So you just simply hit the M button. So if you want to go to a lower power mode, let's go all the way down to two in Eco. And you can see a one. And you can see it's. So everything's working. Let's go back to sport. Highest level nine. battery okay now let's install the app so that you can change your power settings when you download the egg Rider app on the app store it looks like this I'm gonna hit open and it sees the egg Rider. I'm gonna tap on it I'm gonna hit activate now it says shop you hit GL GL Engineering shows up. That's what you're gonna pick, GL Engineering. And then the order number, I'm gonna hide that. You'll have your own order number in the mail, in your email. And then I'm going to, you're gonna put in your email address. I'm gonna put in my email. I'm not showing this because Call this blacky. This is all black. I know it's not very creative. And then activate. And then you have your display. Let me get a, <clears throat> as you can see, uh, the battery is 36% charged. Uh, 49.8 volts. A uh, couple things in the settings before you do anything. So to get to settings, I'll show you how to do that. Let's go to uh, let's go back to the display. You hit this icon here, and then you hit the three dash lines up on the top left, and then you go to uh, displays. Uh, actually, power levels. ASI. Sorry. Sorry, ASI, read first, never write, always read. And you can see what's stored. Since this is a um, X160, the battery can only tolerate up to 4,000 kilowatts. Uh, I have eco mode at 2.2 kilowatts stock. This battery is two kilowatts, three kilowatts, but we went up one full kilowatt. If the battery, for example, uh, this is set too high and you have not BMS, you have not bypassed your BMS, um, your battery may cut out on you. You don't really need to change all these settings. Uh, you just have to go down to battery current limit and go down by 5%. Right, turn off the display, turn it back on, and then we go to this page again and read, make sure it says 95% because we're going from 100% to 95%. Go out for a test ride and if it doesn't cut out, you're fine. But if it keeps cutting out, the power is too high for the battery and just keep going down by 5%. Always test at the highest settings, meaning sport mode, level nine. That way your 
assured that it won't cut out. If it doesn't cut out on the highest level, it's not gonna cut out at the lowest levels. So always test on level nine, all right? And then uh, we're gonna set up our batteries under display settings. We're gonna, I have a 60 volt battery right next to me. Right there, it's a Tehran battery. It's from that Tehran over there. And we're going to be able to swap back and forth. <clears throat> so here are the battery settings for my, my well, this particular Tehran. Uh, 60 volt settings, uh, 72 volt settings. And that's just so that my battery indicator icon uh, matches my battery when I'm swapping batteries, which I'll show you how to do uh, in a moment. Uh, this is a X160, so from the wheel size, I chose 17. And that's pretty much it. Uh, let's go back. You can also change your power uh, levels from here, as you can see. Change it here, they change there. Uh, so it's pretty neat. All right, so let's say you want to go from a 48 volt to a 60 volt or 48 volt to 72 volt. Uh, the process is the same. The first step you're going to do is you're going to close your X, you're going to turn off the display. And then you're going to turn off the bike, take out the battery. Throw your circuit brake back to the left, and plug your battery. Take out the signal battery, X160. And this is a Ceron 60 volt battery. It's much heavier. There's a lot more batteries in here. Okay, connect your battery, throw the circuit breaker, right, close, turn on the bike, do not turn on, do not turn that on, we're going to uh, use the CYC app for now, uh, you'll be able to do this with the GL Engineering Dashboard and Tuner app going to be a more robust app um, that allow you to do some real cool tuning. In the meantime, we'll use this app to do battery swaps. Then you're going to look for your bike. It's going to be e-bike, not dirt e-bike, but e-bike. I'm going to tap on it. It doesn't really highlight, but just make sure you tap on it and then hit that to connect. It says connected. If you go back, that is red. So it is connected and you can see the battery voltage 66. You're gonna go into settings. And then you go to general. And there is a line with an arrow that says load from local files. These files, you will get them from us. It has all kinds of cool tunes. You have the uh, 60 volt bypass, the stock 60 volt, the uh, 48 volt. In this case, we have a 60 volt battery here. So we're gonna do the GLE 60 volt stock battery. This one has not been bypassed. So click on that. And then it says warning, do not interrupt after clicking okay. So it's gonna write these parameters. It takes a couple seconds. It doesn't really take that long. <clears throat> and then hit okay. Then turn off your bike. Wait a couple seconds. Close this out. Turn this back on. And then you can now turn on your display. As you can see, it says 65 volts. You can also open your app. Connect to your app. You see 65. Let's see if it works.
okay? So now that you have a more powerful battery in here from a 48, then you can go back to your settings here and go to ASI settings. Remember, read first. Remember we had the 48 volt battery in here. So this was set to 2.2 kilowatts and 4,000. You can change that to, let's go to, for eco mode, we're gonna do 3,500. Uh, and then here we're gonna do 6,400. I always fill this out, I don't know why, but I don't think you need to, but I'll do it anyway. Same torque settings, regen. These are the settings that you're gonna use. And then you just go to write. And then you can remember power off your leg rider and power back on. And now those settings are stuck. You can open back up your egg rider, connect to it. And now you have a uh, much higher power settings because you have a higher voltage battery. So you can see we have no faults at all. The display works just the same. You can go down to Eco, to a 2, Eco 1 or 2. Sport full power. And that's pretty much the process for uh, doing a battery swap. So let's say you went from a 60 volt battery to a 72 volt battery, and obviously you increased your power settings and you flashed the parameters with the CYC app for the 72 volt battery. If you're, going to go, if you're going to go down back to a 60 volt, because let's say you fully depleted the 72, you want to go riding again, um, you're going to have to remember, go back to the CYC app, flash the 60 volt parameter, and then go into the um, Egg Rider app and bring down the settings uh, to the 60 volt parameter settings. Because um, if you don't, uh, your, your battery is going to cut out because it's the power settings are too high, especially if your battery has a BMS or the controller might uh, still think that it's using a 72 volt battery if you didn't flash the 60 volt tune to the CYC app when you went back down to a 60 volt. So just remember to do those things and you'll be fine. Also remember after you enter your power settings in the Egg Writer app, first you read your settings, then you write, then you power off the display, power it back on and those settings stick. Hopefully that helps. If you have any questions, feel free to call us or email us. So we want to thank you for being a customer. We hope you enjoy your kit. We hope you enjoy uh, being able to swap batteries uh, and at the same time, uh, spend more time writing and less time charging. If you have any questions about our install, feel free to shoot out an email to us at uh, support at glengineering.co. That's support at glengineering.co. We'll be happy to answer all your questions and uh, make sure you order your kits before they're all gone. Have a good one.